Well, let's talk now to Ideat Hassan, who's director of the Centre for Democracy and Development uh, in Nigeria. Welcome. Uh, so your organisation has been monitoring this election. Uh, I want to first of all ask you about the period running up to the vote. Uh, what do you make of the, the legitimacy of the campaign and how it's been conducted? I think one, it's so, it, it has been a mixture of good and bad. There has been a lot of excitement as Nigerians want to vote for their new leaders. But at the same time, it's also been a bit violent compared to previous elections. And, you know, with this violence, I think we counted 60 incidences of violence during rallies, during campaign, uh, which is a far increase from the 24 experience during the 2019 general elections. So when you look at this, it actually impinges on the legitimacy of the outcome eventually because election is a process, it's not a one-day event of what we are seeing today. So you say an increase in violence this time around compared to the last election. Uh, what do you put that down to? I think it's because of the, tightly, the tight nature of the contest that, that for the first time in the history of the country, even as people are currently voting, or they just finished voting and counting is ongoing, we have no idea who will actually emerge the winner of this contest. It just has made all the political parties to become like politics here is zero sum. So it's made them to extremely uh, become maybe over high, active, hyperactive, and doing any and everything to ensure that they win this race. And what about the, uh, the voting itself? Uh, we've had reports of delays in some places and some reports of violence too. Yes, I think, yes, the polls started, it's, the polls are a bit patchy because there were delays in different parts of the country, not just in a few places like Bonu, uh, Nasarawa, Plateau, uh, many parts of the country and even the southeastern part of the country itself. Uh, while at the same time we have experienced level of violence, maybe tantamount to something or uh, akin to voter suppression in places like Lagos, Kogi, uh, a bit of Edo and River states, which are like states with a huge number of registered voters as well. So what about the, uh, the wider state of security in Nigeria? What's your assessment? I think Nigeria has never been this insecure in all the four republics we have uh, we've had as a country. Currently, this country is battling uh, an epidemic of insecurity, ranging from the jihadist insurgency of the Boko Haram or Islamic State in the West African province, banditry in the northwest, separationist agitation in the southeast of the country, kidnapping and other forms of sundry crimes. Um, and I think at this point, this is one of what Nigerians are actually voting in, uh, for or against. It's, it's an opportunity to choose all over again and to choose the right person. So as you say, uh, security obviously a big issue. Uh, what do you think the other issues will be that may end up deciding this election? Economy, really. I think uh, currently with a youth unemployment of over 33%, We've twice been in um, experienced recession since the coming into office of the Buhari administration. Uh, the new the Naira swap, the demonetization of the Naira itself has compounded the wars Nigerians are actually experiencing. There is food insecurity. It's, it, looks, it, it, it looks gloomy. And it looks gloomy for many when they are not able to put food on their table. So this, they do now know that votes do have consequences. And this is why issues are, for the first time, driving these elections. Competence, aside from issues of identity, uh, that, of course, is playing a very big role in these elections. Adiyat Hassan from the Centre for Democracy and Development. Good to talk to you today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much.